My name is Dominic Bergman. Devitt, I'm the data and partnership strategist for DPLA. Um, so just some, some quick uh, background. And uh, first of all, what is DPLA? So Digital Public Library of America is uh, a nonprofit uh, member network that aggregates digital collections for over 4,000 contributing cultural institutions um, in the United States. So it's essentially a search portal um, for searching across all of the libraries and museums and archives um, in the United States. Since the start of 2020, um, we have uh, launched what we call our digital asset pipeline to Wikimedia. Just a quick summary of what we've accomplished so far since 2020. Uh, DPLA is now the single biggest um, kind of uh, contributor to Wikimedia Commons. Um, and uh, so we have uploaded over 3.7 million files to Wikimedia Commons, um, generated 250 million page views. There are over 300 contributing institutions across the United States. Um, and as part of this, it's not just an upload project, but we've actually developed technology for synchronizing continually over time the metadata for the files that we provide. And that's what I want to talk about more. This um, synchronization project uh, makes use of structured data on commons. And so in addition to those 3.7 million uploads, I took a look today and the, our bot account has actually made over 15 million other um, edits. Uh, because we're constantly uh, adding new metadata and um, updating the existing structured data statements. Uh, so that represents about 50 to 100 million structured data statements. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because we're kind of um, maxing out what the query service can actually handle. Um, the technology we developed it uses um, Wikimedia um, uh, database queries. So I use Quarry for that. And uh, the code for the bot is written in Python using PyWikiBot. And on Wiki, it relies on Lua based templates to display the metadata, um, which I will uh, show you right now. I have some tabs queued up. So I'm going to go through and just kind of quickly walk you through um, the how the structured data part of this project works. Um, so this is an individual um, file upload. Uh, it comes from uh, one of our partner institutions, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, um, uploaded through our hub, the Northwest Digital Heritage, uh, in, uh, which is the regional hub for the states of Oregon and Washington. Um, and so you see here, as you expect under Wikimedia Commons pages, all of the data that we upload along with the image, uh, and it comes from, from the catalogers, from the source institution. Um, when I look at the structured data tab to see, you'll see all of this data is actually represented as structured data statements. For each statement, we use a qualifier that says that um, this data was determined by a GLAM institution at its website. We provide a reference for every single DPLA originating uh, statement that uh, uses the DPLA catalog as the, the reference URL. Um, and the reason for that is um, uh, whenever we uh, make changes, we only will change things that are um, supposed to exactly match what's the, the current state of DPLA's catalog. So this allows, uh, using a reference statement like this, allows the Wikimedia community to make changes um, to any of the structured data for a given DPLA upload, and we're not going to mess with it or override it in any way. Um, so this is what this one file looks like represented entirely, all the descriptive metadata re represented as uh, structured data statements. Um, and uh, one of the, uh, the goals of this project and what this has allowed us to do, um, which I'll show you, is to be able to actually uh, reflect, uh, make changes to the structured data, um, which uh, allows us to easily detect changes when we have uh, something out of sync in the catalog. We just compare values across the two sources from the DPLA API. Uh, we make those changes and uh, they're immediately reflected in, um, in, the, uh, in the actual wiki text of the page uh, once we've finished migrating all the templates. But this is 
showing you the ideal case here. So if I hit edit at the top of the page here, you'll see what I mean, which is that uh, that all of the text that you're seeing there, all the data that you're seeing there was actually generated live uh, on the fly from the actual structured data on Commons. Um, okay, so this is uh, View It. It's a, another tool that I made with uh, together with my partners, um, Kevin and Jamie. Uh, this was our team. Um, and uh, this, the goal of View It is to um, provide uh, browsers, readers, and editors um, of Wikimedia projects uh, easy access to all of the images uh, on Wikimedia Commons representing the topics that they're actually looking at. Um, so they're not limited to just what, you know, editors of, a, of an article have curated for that image. Um, and the idea of this really comes out of um, the fact that structured data and, um, you know, depict statements in particular uh, allow us to have these, draw these relationships where we can be looking at an article and know, um, you know, through the technology, all of the images that are tagged on commons as, uh, you know, depicting that subject. So to start off with, this is the, the tool uh, documentation lives on MetaWiki. You can go to meta.wikimedia.org and search for view it tool. Uh, it is a user script, which means at this point, um, you need to be logged into an account and you would add it using the very simple instructions there. It's just copying and pasting to a page um, to, to add the, the code to your account. Um, and what you will get will be a, a set of um, uh, tools and links on your uh, page when you're viewing Wikimedia projects that will let you see more images than you normally see. So this is a quick screenshot. I'm going to quickly walk you through what that uh, looks like in practice. So here we have the View It tool page on Meta. Uh, I've gone through, I've installed this, the script um, using the, the instructions here, and I'm going to show you what that looks like on some pages. So you can read through the article to see a lot of images that the editors have selected, or you could, um, if you're you know, wanting to just see the images uh, right away, or the reason you're looking up the topic is to see pictures of that thing, um, view it, showing the images at the top will uh, provide you really easy access. Um, you can expand it, um, like I already had before, for uh, a little more real estate devoted to the images there. Um, what these images represent are images on commons uh, that either uh, depict mangroves, um, meaning they uh, have a depict statement in their structured data in which the value is the Wikidata item that's linked to the Wikipedia article for Mangrove, um, or are in the Commons category uh, that is also uh, linked as the category for Mangrove from its Wikidata item. Um, and so that's data being pulled live from the API. Um, there's also the, the View It tool adds this view, new View tab to the top of the page. Um, if you click that, um, it will give you an actual, uh, like full page gallery, uh, and which will infinitely scroll, um, for images of this subject. So I pulled up here, the James Whitcomb Riley Museum home, um, which is a museum, uh, about a mile from my home. And also one that is one of the participating institutions in the DPLA project I was just talking about, and, um, its collections have been uploaded. Um, so here you can see, uh, it's a, a little bit of a shorter article, uh, it has one main image and a few in a gallery. Um, you know, I, I noticed as I read this, that, um, view it is showing me all of these images at the top that are historical photos, including some of the interior, none of the articles in the, in the image as I came up to it, um, have any photos of the interior yet, even though as I read it. I could see uh, that there is actual text on the page. If you can't read that, it says the interior woodwork is all hand carved solid hardwood. So there's text on the page that, re that relates to the interior of this building. Um, so what I wanna show you here is also how view it is useful for editors. So when I hit uh, edit, you'll see all of the images uh, in the, the top now have little copy to clipboard icons. So it allows me to just quickly go to the one I want. I'm going to choose one that shows this interior woodwork. 
Um, so I'm going to click on this, this one, just the, that copy button, uh, and go to where I want to put it. And I'm just going to paste it in there. Uh, it went down to the bottom because of this info box. I'm going to hit move it to the left, caption there, uh, and publish. I've done this completely live entirely using Vue it um, and made the save. 